and click record. And then we're going to talk about a little bit over the printers itself and everything covered in that area. But first, we need to kind of talk about the design phase. So as I know, Project Lead the Way has their own little graph for a design process, and that's exactly what we have to go through in order to create things on this um, printer. So we are going to, to go through those iteration phases, and we're going to make different designs, and sometimes the designs aren't going to work the first time, so you have to go back and modify those. And we do this in 3D modeling environments. As I know, you should be pretty at Inventor, is that correct? Yes. Awesome. So Inventor is a wonderful unit, and all you have to do to get out of Inventor is an STL file. And so I'm sure you've experienced that. Each Inventor is a little bit different. Some goes to, like, you have to go to file and print and then export. And then some are, like, file, print, and send a 3D print service. Um, sometimes that's kind of it. And I think the newer Inventors have already put in a button that allows you just simply to export as a 3D file. So we're going to need that STL type. And an STL stands for standard triangle length. Basically, it just means we take whatever part we had expressed in the shapes previously, and we put it in a triangle. So basically, if you were to think of a sphere, it would essentially be a whole bunch of triangles covering all of the surfaces. And the smaller the triangles, the nicer it looks. The bigger the triangles, the kind of rougher it looks, right? It's going to look more like a, a original shape rather than a circle itself. OK. So kind of what we're going to do is we're going to cover the second process. So the first step is that design phase, and I know you're very good at that, so I'm not going to cover it too heavily. If you are looking for other design programs that may be running on Chromebooks or otherwise, you can always try something like TinkyCAD. It's a great introduction. Maybe the junior high might like that a little bit more. And then Onshape is another one. And Onshape is also entirely web-based, and you sign up for it just for free. So all of the things that I'm going to tell you about are free for educators and students. It should be relatively easy for you to sign up for, especially if they have school emails. Okay. Now, the last one I want to mention is Fusion 360. It operates just like Inventor. It is actually my preferred. So I started through AutoCAD. I've done uh, SolidWorks a little bit. I've done Inventor, and I've done Fusion 360. And Fusion 360 is definitely my favorite. Okay. Um, it's a very easy transition from Inventor, and it doesn't take quite as much processing power as Inventor does. Um, so just a heads up for you on that one. So let's move into that step two. So once we have that STL file, we're going to have to put it into a second program in order to make the printer understand. So basically, we're converting our English of the shape and triangles to Chinese or coordinates for the printer. So all it is is basically a translation program. And if we don't put it through that program, the is never going to understand all what they're trying. So the first thing that we're going to do, if you have it on you by hand, there should be a small USB within your packaging. Got it. There should be a couple of them, and each one links to a printer, basically, and there should be a micro SD card in the back of it. So right. what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and plug that into your program, and we're going to install Cura, which is a 3D printing slicing software. Basically, so when you plug in your little USB, I might need a micro SD card in the back of it. That might help. So I'm plugging this into my laptop. Yes. Okay. Can you install programs on yours? Can I what? Can you install programs on your laptop? Well, yes. <laughs> I may have to hold on. It's. The problem is I may have to switch to the administrator. I have administrative rights, but I have to do a different login, mm -hmm. which is going to require me to switch. I should have done that before I ever got on with you. That's stupid. Okay. Well, that's not a problem. If you want to take the time to do that now, it'll be the exact same link. You'll access it through the same thing, and it should immediately join you, okay? Okay, so go ahead and switch real quick. Yeah, go ahead and switch so we can go ahead and install Cure and go through with the training. Okay, it'll take me just a second. Yeah, not a problem. Okay.
Oh, where'd you go? Are you there? I'm here. Okay, hold on. I got to find <laughs> the link. Do I just hit the link? Oh, wait. No. Nope. You're already talking to me. You don't need to do anything else. I like to see you, though. Ah. Yeah. Where? I'm over here. Um, do I just go back to like the email you sent me? Yes. Or is there somewhere else I can go to to hit Zoom? How do I do that? If you're already talking to me, Zoom should be up somewhere on your computer. So if you look for it in maybe one of the corners, it might have shrunk into a small box. Or if you look in your web browser, it may be on one of those web pages. Okay. Um, oh, this is weird. Oh, there you are. No, that's. I don't. I don't see it anywhere. That's so weird. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No. Um. Oh gosh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so we've lost it somewhere on your computer. Yes. Because I could hear you while it was switching. Okay. Well, if you wanted to, you could actually exit the meeting and then rejoin it, and it should pull up that box again. Hold on. Give me one second. I'm going to switch to hurry up thing. Sorry. No, don't no. worry. There it is. 3D printer training. Zoom. Go. Let's see if you pop back up. Okay. Where are you? Run. Go. Oh, come on, thing. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna kick you out of the video and then I want you to join back in, okay? Okay, sounds good. Hello. Okay, there, I, I got gotcha. you. Okay, sounds good. So I'm gonna actually share my screen with you now so that you can watch me go through it and okay. you can also do it at the same time. So whenever I hit share screen, it's probably going to maximize on your screen, just to let you know. So if you wanna escape that, which you will, just go ahead and hit the escape key in the top left and it should minimize it. Okay. okay. So what we're looking at is first, we want to open up our SD card. And so within your SD card, you should have three folders. You should have a Cura, an STL, a test prints, and then the user manual. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to double click on Cura. So I need to be doing this or just watching you? Yeah, you can go ahead and do this with me. Um, okay, hold on. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Computer, no, no, no. SD card, Cura. All right. There and the Cura, the very first one. All right. Yep. That is perfect. And then double click it, and it's going to go through and tell you to install these certain things. Go ahead and click yes on those. And then once you get to this new, until you get to this page, which says add a new machine or add a printer. So go ahead and finish your installation, and it'll say select your machine whenever it first starts. Okay, it's still spooling. Sure. Uh, choose install location. Yeah, that's great. Um, sure. Yep, and all the base settings should be perfect for what we need. So you should be able to go through those and click install. Okay, so that's, it's installing, it's almost done. Wonderful. So I may ask you for Arduino drivers. You're welcome to install them if you want, if you want to hook the computer directly to the printer, but it's not necessary with the SD cards. Okay. So don't install the 
It says, would you like to install the device software, the Arduino? Put don't install. Yeah, if you want it to be a little bit quicker, you don't have to. Okay, don't install, finish. And if you ever need to plug the printer into your computer, you can always just rerun the installer and it'll install it for you. Oh, okay, okay. So not a problem, we're not missing anything. All right, it says completed and I'm gonna go to next. Perfect. Um, finish. And then it should show up a little cure box that's kind of blue, and then it should start and go to the configuration with um, The box will show up on the desktop or where? Yeah, you should see it pop up here soon. The dial. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay. There it goes. Awesome. So. All right. Uh, English, yes. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. What kind of machine do you have? Perfect. So what we're going to do is select other down at the bottom. Other. All right. Click next. And then we're going to click on Mendel on the other machine information. We're going to click Mendel, M-E-N-D-E-L, about halfway down. Okay. And then click next. All right. It says Cura is now ready to be used. Perfect. So now what it's going to build, basically pull us into is our design space. So where we're going to edit everything and where everything's going to basically be. And in this case, we don't have our printer set correctly quite yet. We need to ma manipulate a few settings so this box fits what we want it to be. And then also these settings here on the left hand side that you see on this main screen are our print settings or how our object will look like at the end. So there's okay. a lot of information in this particular program itself. So this is all of step two. Once you have done this once on a computer, it should stay that way unless logged in by another user. So it's possible that when you swap back to your other account that's non-administrator, it may ask you to do these again. Okay. Don't, don't fret because we have all of the settings available to you. Inside the Cura folder, there is an image, a PNG file, and it has all of the stuff that we're gonna go through. Okay. Perfect. So first, what I want you to do is go ahead and click in the top left-hand corner, click on machine, and then choose machine settings. Machine, machine settings, okay. And we're gonna change the width, depth, and height to match our printer so that this blue box matches our size for our blue build plate. So the first width will be 125. Make sure your num lock's enabled. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 125. Yep, 125, and then the depth will be 150. Okay. And finally, our height will be 100. And so that's our print area, you said? Yep, so that's gonna be about five inches by six by four. Okay, five by six by four print area, mm -hmm. okay. And then let's uncheck the heated bed box right here. Uncheck. And then click change machine name because you do have more than one machine. Yes. And you can just type in the A5 printer. Wait, uh, oh, change machine name. Okay. Yep. And what'd you say? I'm going to put in NWA 3D A5. NWA 3D A5. And I would think your Affinibot has very similar characteristics in this program to the one we're using right now. So if you were to select the same values and then change the width, depth, and height, and if it's a heated bed or not, I would say you could probably also run your other machine off this exact same program without any issues. Oh, okay. Okay. And then... Right, I, oh, sorry. You're good. So once you enter the name, click OK, and then OK one more time. OK and OK. All right. And now we have the blue box that matches our printer. So that's good, and we're ready to go. And we turned off the heated bed so we won't get that error value from our printer. So do remember to check that box. It will cause you a little bit of finicky errors um, if you don't. So what we're going to cover next before, you should have a little robot in. Is that right? Hey, mine... Yeah, mine has like a little robot in it and it's tilted to the side, not like yours. That's perfect. So not a problem. We will cover that here in just a second. Okay. Uh, we can actually load a file in with you if you would prefer. 
um, or we can cover that in the next step. Whatever you want me to do is good. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover all of the left-hand side settings. So I'm basically going to talk to you about what do these do and how can we manipulate them to achieve the results we want. So first, the layer height is the biggest determinant of quality. So how nice will the print look? Is it going to look very fine or is it going to look very coarse? So think of it almost as like a screen has pixels, a print has layers. Okay. The closer they, the pixels are together, the nicer the picture looks, right? Right. That's the exact same thing with layer height. So the closer the plastic layers are, the cleaner it looks. So for this printer, we can go anywhere from 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 in layer height. Now 0 0.1 is going to be the closest, and it's going to make it look very nice, but it's also going to take a longer amount of time as well as more plastic to print it. So keep that in mind as you change some of these settings, it'll change how much plastic or how much time you're going to use. So I'm gonna leave it at 0 0.2 because that's my happy medium and I like it there. They print in a good amount of time while not being super pretty, so. Okay. Next, we're gonna change the shell thickness value. We're gonna change this to 0 0.8. And so you'll notice it kind of goes yellow, but that's a good thing. We, it is the value we want it to be at because we want it to be a multiple of four. Now, the only reason we want that is because a piece of hardware on our printer is 0.4 millimeters, and that's what spits out the plastic. So the nozzle is only 0.4 millimeters wide, so each you know, layer or area it goes over, it's only going to squirt out 0.4 millimeters of plastic. So the shell thickness essentially tells us that these are the horizontal walls to the build plane. So if it passes once, it's gonna do 0.4 and passes by again twice, it's going to do 0.8. So what we've just said is there should be two wall thicknesses. So it's gonna print one outside wall and one inside wall. I'll show you a little bit more about that when we load the file in. Okay. So we're also gonna change the bottom and top thickness to 0.8. Now this is just to keep all of the walls the same height or distance. You don't have to have this one as a multiple of four. It's up to you. As a matter of fact, you could set this at zero and have no bottom to your model or no top to your model. Um, we recommend just using kind of the same settings for shell thickness and bottom and top so that all your walls are the same thickness and you have the same rigidity around the object. Okay. Next, we're gonna have fill density, and this is what actually determines your durability. So this is the lattice structure that's going to be contained within your walls. So this supports the shells and the bottom and top. Now, the higher the value, of course, the more plastic it's going to use, and it's going to be more durable, the lower the value, vice versa. So in this case, we're gonna leave it at 20, and I'll show you changing that value does here in just a moment. Okay. Printing speed, we're going to leave that at 50 millimeters per second. Now 50 is just about the fastest we can go on these printers without seeing any print defects. If you choose to go faster, you may see some weird things happening when it is printing. If you want to decrease the value, that is more than helpful. It'll actually increase the quality and look of your object most of the time but it also substantially increases the time. So if you had an hour at 50 millimeters per second, reducing that to 35 may bump it to almost two hours or two and a half. Oh, wow. And we'll, we'll, I'll show you that value. There's actually a little dialogue that pops up right here to show you, so. Okay. All right, next we're gonna do printing temperature and that's going to be 220 degrees Celsius. Now that's our preferred temperature to print PLA, which is the type of plastic you have. And PLA stands for polylactic acid, which is a biodegradable and made from cornstarch. So that just, it can be printed a little bit colder if you prefer. Uh, we find it just melts really good at 220 and sticks a little bit better to the build area. Okay. So next we're gonna do the support types and we're gonna change this value to everywhere just to make sure that any models that are placed inside of our settings are going to be supported where they need to be. So if you have a part that's overhanging an area, it's not going to print off in midair. 
So in order to get to that distance, it's going to create some sort of scaffolding to make it there. Okay. Essentially, it's just going to have that, you know, support structure underneath that area and then successfully print the top area. Okay. Build plate adhesion is exactly as you think it would be. It helps adhere to the build plate. And so we have a brim as well as a raft in these settings. So as you know, or you've experienced a raft, with these printers, we shouldn't need one. Most of the object, as long as they have a good surface area, will lay down. Okay. Brims are going to create a suction cup effect and create layers of plastic outside of the model, but not create a platform for it to sit on. Okay. Diameter for filament, we're going to change that to 1.75. You can also find that value on the side of your plastic. It should have a small sticker. Oh, okay. Should say the color, the size, and the type. Flow percentage, we're going to leave it 100. Basically, this value just means extra extrusion or under extrusion. So if I change it to 105%, it's going to squirt out 5% extra plastic. And finally, we're going to change our nozzle size. And I had mentioned earlier that this is a 0.4 millimeters. Now that's a piece of hardware on the printer that I'll show you when we cover the details. And it's not going to change unless you change it physically. Okay. Wonderful. So we have all of our print settings ready to load something in and slice it and send it to our printer. So what we're going to do is we're going to click load here in the top left hand corner. Okay. Now if you have an STL file that you would prefer to print, you are more than welcome to. Or you can navigate to the SD card and you can double click in the STL files folder. A couple of things there for you. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and load the six-sided dice. I'm actually going to... Is it, under, is it under test prints or STL files? STL files. I have an A5 spool. Hold on, let me see. Oh, there it is, six-sided dice. Yep. So go ahead and load that one in. And I'm going to load in both the keychain and the dice just to show you something. So you don't have to if you don't want to. It's up to you. But okay. I'm going to Click on one, hold control, and click on the other, and then click open. Okay, so, my little robot is still there. Yeah, and we can cover, if you don't want the robot, you can right click on them and select delete. Or if you don't want the dice, you can right click the dice and select delete. Oh, is it gonna print the robot? Yeah, if you want. Oh, okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, that's all up to you. If Whichever one you don't want, go ahead and delete it. So I just wanted to show you how to load a file to make sure you got it. And okay. how to delete a file is also useful. I'll, I'll delete the dice, I'll print the robot. Cool. So what I went ahead and did is I loaded in two models. So you can load in as many models as your build plate can fit. Now it's going to increase the time based upon what models you place into the environment and so on. So if you have three kids that want something printed, if they're small enough, they should all be able to fit on the same build area. Okay, so first I'm going to tell you a little bit about the camera control so you can actually look at your objects. So if you right click, you should be able to rotate the whole space around. Oh, okay, cool. If you zoom in and out with the scroll wheel, simple enough. Okay. And then if you hold down the shift key and right click, it's going to pan. Oh, okay, awesome. Okay. So those are going to be your three camera controls. You shouldn't need anything else. I don't think there is anything else. Okay. And what we're going to do now is we're going to select a model. So if you go ahead and left click on one of the models, in the bottom left hand corner, there's going to be a couple of boxes that pop up. So we're going to have a rotate, a scale, and a mirror. So I'm sure you're already familiar with these tools. Kira uses them a little bit different. If you click on the rotate, it's going to pop up a couple of circles. Each of those circles responds to an axis, and you can manipulate it however you wish. So for the sake of the keychain, I'm going to manipulate it to show you what I want or show you supports. So I'm going to move it to a 45 degree angle. Actually, let's just do a 30. So it snaps to 15s, usually. I'm going to leave the dice just as it is. And then if you chose, you could scale the object. Now, 
Scaling is this top value is going to be a percentage. So whichever value you'd like, if you put 1.5, it's going to increase it by 50% or half. Next, uh, the size X, Y, and Z would be very accurate dimensions. So if you only wanted the X to be 50 millimeters long, you could type that value in and it would shrink it accordingly on all axes. Okay. If you want to reset, you always have that value or you have a two max button that's also available. So it'll blow it up to the size of the build area. So don't show the students that one. Okay. <laughs> um, mirror, now that just flips it over an axis. If you do mirror it over an axis that has words or something, it will actually reverse those words. I printed one of the dices and I had actually mirrored it over the X axis and it completely flipped everything. Uh, my twos and my threes and everything was backwards. It was weird. Oh, okay. So keep that in mind when using the mirror. Okay. Excellent. So now we have our models inside and we have everything prepared. And up here in the top left hand corner, you'll notice that there is a time. So what time do you have for your uh, robot? Uh, it says 23 minutes. Perfect. That's not long. I have 45 minutes for both of these objects. So that's not too bad either. And hey, I have, a, I have a question. Why did you pop up and angle the keychain? So that's to show you what the supports are. Okay. So I to show you a new type of view mode, and um, it's going to show you what supports are going to be and how they are generated. Okay, okay. I'll let you keep going. Sorry. Perfect. So... Um, the time is right here, and then right under it is going to be the material usage, first in length and then in weight. Okay. So if we click in the top right-hand corner and click on view mode, and then scroll down to layers. Okay. The layer view is my favorite view. It actually tells you what the printer is going to do. Um, this is going to give you an example of why this is called a slicing program. So if I zoom in here and I kind of rearrange my camera a little bit, you'll notice that there are actually layers and you can see the separation of everything. So these are the layers that the printer itself will go through in order to create each object. So first, if we kind of look at the colors real quick, the red is going to be the outside walls of your model. The green is going to be the inside wall. And so it, since our shell thickness is 0.8, we have one red, one green. If we increase that value, we'd have more greens. Okay. The, let's see here, the light blue is going to be your support or your platform adhesion. And then I think that's all the colors we, the yellow, sorry. The yellow is going to be infill or basically the area that is supporting the outside walls. Okay. So here's a look at the support. And if you notice, it's very scaffolding. It doesn't really do too much except hold up that area. And so I can scale through here with this little scroll wheel on the right-hand side. And it basically shows you that it's just going to have, you know, lines going across it. And so this technically would not be the best way to print this model. I would want to turn it probably 90 degrees to make the supports line up in the opposite direction. So going against the grain, basically. So they would go like this. Okay. If I rotate it at 90 degrees. That's just a design consideration. I can actually show you that real quick. So you have to go to normal to adjust anything. I'll rotate at 90 degrees and go back to the view mode. Let it make its good stuff. And then you notice how they're going to this side now. Oh, yeah. That's going to give us a better looking model at the end. Okay. Because it's going to support more area underneath this build plate. Okay. Okay, so next we can kind of take a look at the cube. So I'm gonna pan over to the cube here and we can slice through it. Now you'll notice there's that yellow structure within the cube itself, that's our fill density. So if I change this value from 20 to 30%, watch the inside of the yellow, it should drastically increase. Oh wow, okay. So that's the durability I was talking about earlier. If we wanna change the shell thickness, so I can double it and make the walls thicker, so 1.6. Watch the green walls, there's gonna be a lot more of them. And so we have oh, a wow. in that situation. So all of these values are manipulable. We just give you base settings to work with at the beginning. Okay. So as you become more familiar, of course you'll adjust these more and more often. 
Now I'm going to change my fill density to only 10% because the cube's pretty strong as a basic shape. And then I'm gonna make sure my shells are only two walls. Perfect, so the last thing I wanna check is the very first layer. The reason I wanna check this is to make sure I have enough surface area for each piece to make sure it lays down. So since I have supports for this kind of angled keychain, it should be perfectly fine as is. And it also looks like the cube is laying nice and flat. Okay. First layer will tell you a lot. If there isn't a first layer, you will have to reload the model or re try and center it on the platform or lower it to the platform. Okay. That can create issues if you don't have a first layer because the printer is going to try and print in midair afterwards. <laughs> okay. Perfect. So let's go ahead and save this. So I like to click file and save as or save G code because I'm picky. So I'm going to click file, save G code. Hey, wait, wait. Mine said you just click the little save. Yep. Right up next to. You can. Okay, when I hit that, like it says select SD drive. D or H. Oh. You probably have two USBs. No, I had a stupid photo memory card. Uh, Hold on. That would be it. Perfect. Yeah. So, oh, okay. Did it save at save yep. G code? Yep. File, save G code. Oh, I didn't go over there. My bad. I'm going to get it in a minute. Save no, you're fine. Files. I'm just picky, okay. so I like to name my files and make sure where they go. And that's just kind of, I'm nitpicky, so. So I'm going to click okay. Save G Code. I'm going to click on the main folder of the SD card. And then I'm going to name it Keychain Cube. All dice, I suppose. And then click Save. Okay, okay, go ahead, save. So what I'm gonna do next is now that I've saved it, I'm gonna close Cura and I want to make sure to eject it simply because if it doesn't finish saving, you can have massive problems with your printer. Now, you do wanna make sure it finished saving onto the SD card. If it doesn't, then you're gonna notice it and that's the first troubleshooting step is to check your slicer. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit right click and so it says it's currently in use. This window back behind you. And then open this one again and try it one more time. There we go. Now I ejected it so I know my files are safe. And I'm going to go ahead and bring you back to me. You feel comfortable with that? Any questions? No, I'm good so far on that. Hold on, I'm trying to get mine ejected. Oh, save to remove. Okay. So there we go. All right. I got it. Awesome. So now that's all of step two. I know it seems like it takes a long time. It just does the first time to explain everything afterwards. Yeah. So we're going to take the little USB and we're going to take the SD card out of the back of it. Okay. And then we're going to do step three, which is just transfer it to the printer. So I'm going to grab the printer. And if you look underneath the button on the yellow face of the printer, you should see a small SD card slot. Right down here. Oh, okay. Wow, that is tiny. Yep, it's gonna be super tiny. It's right yeah. next to another little plug-in port, right? Yep. Uh-oh, I lost my, what happened to it? There it is. Okay. So plug-in port is uh, for you to hook up to the computer. Now, we don't recommend that simply because if the computer falls asleep, turns off anything, any scenario, it's going to stop printing. That's why. Oh, yeah, I don't want that. Systems. Okay, so we went ahead and transferred it. And that's all of step three. So, probably the easiest step. And then I'm going to go ahead and plug my printer in. And now the only other thing that I would have left to do if I knew the printer was ready to go would be click on the button once and go down to print from SD. Click on, okay, hold on. Sorry. Click on the button. Oh, okay. Oh, it says no SD, refresh SD card maybe? Perfect. You got it. Click refresh and then it'll say print from SD card. Print from SD. And then okay. if you click on that, it'll show you all of the files inside of it. And it'll only show you the files that it can see. 
So even if you go into the test prints, it's not going to find anything in there or inside of the STL files. It won't find anything unless that's where you saved it. Oh, okay. So we can only see G code files. And that's the second type we loaded out of Cura. Okay. Perfect. So. Okay, I didn't hit it. And so, hold on. Sorry. Am I supposed to pick the robot? So don't pick it yet because oh, okay. we're okay. everything right with our printer. Gotcha. So the next steps are basically going to be the troubleshooting phase. So what happens if something goes wrong, right? So right. a lot of things that go wrong, as I'm sure you've experienced before. And we want to talk about those. So these are going to be general tips and tricks for all 3D printers. And so first off, the very first thing you want to do is check your slicer settings. So that would be to go back to Cura, make sure everything loaded correctly, there's no problems. And sometimes even checking the G-code file by loading it back into Cura can save you a lot of time. So that's something to check with students' files. If they're slicing them, I recently had a tech support request that the file was all sorts of out of whack and they just couldn't get it to print. And that would be why. What do, what do you mean slicer? I'm sorry. So Cura is the slicer, right? Oh, okay, okay, okay. So it takes all the triangles that we had that we talked about earlier and it cuts it into layers. So it slices. Okay, cool. Well, it does. Perfect. So the second troubleshooting, because we've already gone over Cura, we don't need to spend time on that again, is going to be mechanical inspection. So something might be unplugged, something might be you know, turned off, there could be any number of things that is causing a problem. So we're going to kind of do a basic troubleshooting and look at some of the components. So I'm going to swap to this camera so you can see the printer and I'm going to point a couple things out. So here, First off, the most important piece of this entire object is going to be the extruder assembly. So that consists of this tube right here, as well as this area with the fan. So the area with the fan shroud will never be too hot. You can always touch this black surface. Try not to touch underneath the black surface as that is where it is heated. So this is going to be considered the extruder hot end. I'm going to raise this up real quick. And you'll notice that there is also a nozzle underneath here. And so that's the nozzle I was talking about earlier that has the certain diameter, and it is what gets to about 220 degrees. Okay. Okay. So back here, you'll notice that this has kind of a contraption in the back that's going to give us a trigger, as well as a motor that pushes the plastic through the tube into the hot end. So this okay. is Odin extruder which basically means that it doesn't sit right on top of it and doesn't have the problems of constantly clogging. So next we have our X axis here that goes across. Then the Y axis is going to be where the build plate goes back and forth. And then of course the Z axis is going to be up and down. So we're gonna check out four motors, three limit switches, and the two belts on the printer to make sure that they're all nice, plugged in and tight. So first I'm gonna turn it to the left hand, or turn it to the right. And we'll look at the x-axis. So right inside of here, you'll notice there is a small little white plug with an X on it. And this is going to be your X limit switch. So basically where it tells it to stop going to the left, and it's going to be right here. Wait, wait, wait. I see Z and Y. Where'd you say it was? So on the arm. Yeah. Yeah, it should be right here. So do you see this spot with the standoffs? Hold on. I'm looking. There's this. The Oh yeah, now I see it, now I see it. Yeah. Gotcha. So the, the area with the standoffs has a little belt area and that also has the limit switch inside. Okay. Perfect, so we wanna make sure that guy's plugged in, should be. Yes. We're gonna do the same thing with X motor, that should be plugged in, that just drives the belt. Okay. Now if we look all the way to the back, we're gonna have our extruder motor, which is labeled with an E. Okay, I saw that. Now, if we look straight down, we're going to have our Z motor. Yep. We want to make sure that guy's plugged in. And then right here, if you pull the build plate forward, you should be able to see your Y limit switch and motor right here. 
Yes, got them both. Okay, and then finally we have the Z limit switch, which is going to be right here in front. So the Z limit switch is probably the most important switch. If this isn't high enough, it will try and crash into this yellow plating. It should be high enough set right now. If you ever have problems on it, you're welcome to contact support and we'll show you an easy fix. Okay. Okay. So finally, the two belts, we want to make sure that they at least spring back when we touch them. So we have one here on the Y axis and one here on the X axis. Okay, where? What'd you do? So first one right here, I'm basically just touching this rubber belt to make sure it, it springs back when I touch it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. And then also here on this X axis. Okay. Cool. So that's going to be the basic inspection of the printer. If anything gets unplugged, you'll probably notice it. It'll either be like making noises going to the side, kind of growling at you almost, or in some way something will seem oddly. So if it's only doing lines in one direction, probably a motor is unplugged. Okay. Okay, so the next troubleshooting step is going to be leveling the build plate. And this is the most common issues arise. So everything about the build plate needs to be 200 microns away from that little nozzle I showed you earlier. So that's a very, very small gap, and it's going to be particular to try and get it there. So the easiest way we found is to take a piece of paper. So any piece of paper works, and we're going to fold it in half. Okay. Now, now that we have our paper ready, we're going to start the leveling process. So this is the third troubleshooting step. And basically, we want to click first on the printer, go down to setup, and then click auto home. This will cause your printer to move to its origin point or this front left corner. So the plate will go all the way back, the extruder will go all the way left, and then it'll go all the way down. So the most important thing to maintain when in this position or trying to level is the Z axis. It's okay to move the Y and the X, just not up and down. So now you'll notice that if we try and move this or the build plate, it's locked in place. That's just for safety for the printer. So if we click on the button again, go back to setup, and then we have a disable motors option. Now I can move them freely. Okay. Okay, so it's currently locked, like you mm -hmm. said. And then go to setup and disable motors. Perfect. Okay, now we should be able to move the X and Y. Just try and not move it up and down. Okay. Turn and kind of move it around. Uh, try and keep yours uh, at a flat surface so that you can level it. Um, I'm going to just show you a couple of things. Okay, wait, I should be able to move the Y? I'm sorry? If I push disable motors, you said I could, I should be able to move this. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I got that. And this. I can't go up. Yep, don't go up. That's right. Are they kind of hard to move, though? Um, the, this, I mean, they have a, uh, a resistance to them. Okay. You're turning the motor at the same time, so that's kind of what's giving you that resistance. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I wasn't screwing it up. No, 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 no. So the Z axis is the only hard one to really move at this point, just because you have to grab the spiral back here itself to move it. Okay. So it's pretty safe. So I'm gonna show you the three adjustment points to basically adjust this bed. The first one, the most difficult one, is going to be inside of here. And so it's gonna be that black knob and it's gonna have a spring directly above it. Oh, okay, I see it. Now we have two more here on the outside and those are going to be our three adjustment points. 
So keep in mind, we are leveling a triangle. So that makes this back left corner a little bit weird. Okay. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we wanna line up the nozzle with that adjustment knob here. So I'm going to put this extruder right above it. And you can always check it by looking to the side. So mine's pretty way off. So right about there. Okay, hold on. Of my adjust, adjustment area. And then I'm going to put the paper in between the two. Hold on, I'm still. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to be, the nozzle won't be perfectly on that spring, but. No, don't worry about it being perfect. We just want it close. Okay, so I can't put paper in between. Okay, if you're having trouble putting paper in between, you can push down on this build plate as it is riding on springs. So you'll notice you can push this down like so. Okay, now the paper is under the nozzle. Awesome. So it sounds like yours is going to be too tight or they're too close together, right? So they're basically touching. Uh, yeah. In order to change that, we need to adjust the knob counterclockwise. Oh goodness, okay. Yeah, I know, I, give me a second. <laughs> I'll explain it a little bit better. No, I just don't wanna break it. Oh no, you, these are really hard to break. We dropped these off of a six foot ladder and then we put it together with scotch tape and it worked. <laughs> so first, if you're kind of looking down on it like so, I think of it as looking down from the top. And so we have our little knob here. And if I wanna go counterclockwise, that's going to pull it down. Okay. Okay. So basically turning it that way will always pull it down. Okay. Okay. So I'm supposed to do that. Yes. So I'm gonna get up between. Oh, hold on, okay, hold on. And if it's too tight to move, you need to lower it. If you can't feel the paper at all, it needs to move higher. So you're looking for a sweet spot that basically just has a certain drag on the paper. It'll almost sound like it's scraping against it, and that's what we're looking for. So mine's super far off, so I'm turning my clockwise. Now mine's... Okay, so if I can't, I pulled the paper out. So if I can't get it back in there, though... So go ahead and push down on the build plate again to get it back under. Okay. But if it, if it feels like mine, because you see how mine's crinkling when I try and push and pull it, yeah that's still too tight so it should be able to move just feel drag so it should be able to do something like this so it should feel like it's kind of rough oh so mine was maybe way tight or something i would say yours was just really tight yeah and it just changes when oh, it goes. Okay, 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 hold on. So, yeah, now I'm getting it. Hold on. Okay. I think I did it too much now. Yeah, if you can't feel that kind of like resistance or the noise of it kind of rubbing against each other, then make it a little bit further away or closer, sorry. And so it's really just a sweet spot. You'll get used to doing this. You'll get much better at it. It just takes a little bit of practice. Okay. okay. So do you feel good on that point? Um, almost, let me do one more thing, sorry. No, not a problem. Just whenever you feel good about it, we'll move on to the next one. because I can't really. Okay, it's good, it's good, I'm good. Awesome, so now we're gonna to move to this next one that's outside here. Okay. So I'm just gonna push this to the outside and move the plate back a little bit. You do the exact same thing. The so mine's too far away at this point. So I'm gonna go clockwise. So I'm just supposed to push on this black box and move it over. Yep. It's like I'm scraping the plate. 
if you're scraping the plate, it's just too close, and that's what we're adjusting. So, okay. I'm gonna put my paper there. Whoa, I can't even get that spring down. Yeah, I push down on these build plates all the time. Maybe that's why my plate never seems to level. <laughs> Hold on, I'm trying. Okay, thanks. Oh, wow. A little more, sorry. Well, that's okay. You've actually caught on to this very, very well. So there's another method to do this too the paper. We find the paper the easiest to kind of get used to. Um, my preferred method is to look at it with my eyes, to be honest. I just kind of measure a gap with my eyeballs and then try it. And if it and doesn't, go. I move it. Okay, so um, that one's good. Now I'm going to just do the third one. Yep, the third back one kind of right about here. Oh, mine's a little bit too far back. There we go. Okay. And again, it seems mine's too high, so clockwise it is. <laughs> there we go. Oh, wow. Okay, I did it way too much. <laughs> You know what, I'm going to redo this one real quick because I don't think I was over the, and I may have done it too much. One second. No, you're good. I'm just doing my other method, just kind of checking it with my eyes. You're just seeing if it's level with your eyes, you mean? Yep. So I basically check all areas. I basically make a rectangle on it. And I check to make sure that that gap is all the same all the way around. Okay. And then kind of like fine tune it. That's when I'm fine tuning things. So I'll do the paper and then I'll fine tune it just by looking at it. Okay. I think mine's good. But awesome. Then again, I don't know. We'll try it. Go ahead and check it from the side. So I'll show you what mine looks like in the distance that you should have. So let me move it in a different way. Can you see that small gap that it has? Yeah. It's super tiny. Here, I'll move, I'll move this. I don't think mine has that same gap, but let's go, hold on. So you see how small of a gap that is? Not much but it doesn't help that I'm half blind. Yeah, that's why we do the paper. Let me see yours again. Yeah, right here. Okay, hold on. Okay, I like that better. So then I kind of just check it around the whole bill plate kind of by moving it like that. Yeah, I'm way too. I think I'm still too high on. Yep, and then we can also finalize how high it is when we print. And we can watch the plastic stick, which is recommended. And if it's not sticking in a spot, you can move it while it prints. Oh, wow. 
So all of this is kind of temporary, and if you want to adjust it just while it prints, like if you don't see it sticking, then move it closer. If you don't see it extruding, move it further away because it can extrude. It's too close. So those are the two scenarios we're going to look for when we start our print. Okay. If it's not extruding at all and you don't see any plastic, it's too close and they're basically just jamming into each other. And if you see plastic kind of stringing, kind of creating loops, then it's too far away. Okay. Awesome. So we only have one troubleshooting step left to really talk about, and that's filament. So working with your filament and making sure it doesn't get clogged or anything like so. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to heat up our nozzle. So go ahead. What? I'm sorry. We're going to go ahead and heat up our nozzle. Oh, okay. Okay. So go ahead and click on setup. And inside setup, you'll see two preheat values. So the first one is preheat PLA, and uh -huh. the second one is preheat soft pool. So go ahead and choose the preheat PLA, and I'll tell you about the soft pool. Okay, preheat PLA. Uh -huh. So the PLA is just going to heat it up to 220 degrees. So make sure your screen shows that. Okay. So it'll show it right here at the top right-hand corner. Yeah, I can see it moving up. Perfect. So the top value is what it wants to go to. The bottom one is what it's at. So the let's move this off the build plate so it doesn't hurt it. Okay. Do that one of two ways. So when it's heating up, we want to kind of move it away from the build surface. Otherwise, you'll get little marks. So I like the easy way. I basically just turn the spiral in the back clockwise, and it should raise it. Oh, okay. Perfect. And if you wanted to not get your hands a little bit greasy from it, you can always have okay. another option. So if we click on controls, and then we go down to move axis, and then move one millimeter, and then we can choose move Z. So you can move any axis you would prefer, we're going to click Z and then you can change it just to a couple values up and you'll notice it raises it itself. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. Yep. And then if you want to go back to the main screen, just click on the button a whole bunch and it'll move you all the way back. Okay, cool. All right. So now our nozzles are just about hot, but I want to tell you about that soft pool before we start putting filament in. So the preheat soft pool that's under preheat PLA heats it to 100 degrees Celsius instead of 220. Now the reason it does that is if you have plastic already inside your nozzle and you want to remove it, only heating it up to 100 degrees Celsius is perfect for that. So not only is it going to put it in a transition phase, so it's in between its liquid and solid state, it's also going to allow it to expand and grab all that gunk that might be inside the nozzle. And so when you pull it out, it's going to pull out all extra plastic and make a nice removal. So that, that's a good way to remove clogs and remove all plastic. So next, the 220 degrees, since we're already there, we can go ahead and put the filament in. So I have a spool here. I don't think we went over the spool heel holder construction. Yeah, real quick, how do you do the little, I get how the bottom slats in there, but how do I do that screw with the nut on it? So there should be a toolkit that came with it, and the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. smallest is going to be the one you want. So just like this size. Okay. Where is... Okay. And so I like to hold them kind of at 180 degrees, like so. Wait, wait, wait. What do you, you have the pointy one? It's not like a screwdriver? This? Oh. Yeah, what do you have? It's going to look just like this. Oh, the little Allen wrench. Yeah, the little Allen keys. I might have the wrong tool kit in front of me. Hold on. We'll see if this will work. Yep. 
It should be the next to smallest. Okay, hold on. That must be in here in the other room. Sorry, I wonder if it is in the other box <laughs> at the junior high. But I, I'll I have another Allen wrench. Hold on. Okay. It should work. Okay, so all right. Uh, I hold it at 180s like this, and then I just kind of tilt it up until the that falls into place. Uh, well, no wonder I had the yeah. Hold on. And then just slide them together and then hold the nut while tightening from the outside. Well, that was the problem. I was trying to do it from the opposite way. Yeah, the inside, like an idiot. And there we go. Okay, one second. Oh, you piece. Just get, I'm doing better later, and I just need to get them on there now so we can do this. Okay, there's one side. Sorry, let me do the other one real quick. How many of these trainings do you do each week? Um, a lot. <laughs> um like 15. oh wow you know, on, a, on a busy week 15 on a, on a slow week maybe six or seven cool did y'all get any or a lot of orders from the pltw convention or we did um we we sent out a lot of uh a lot of quotes we just haven't had much return yet oh wait i dropped the nut but i got it Okay. I'm so sorry. I could already have this done, but. Oh, no, it's not a problem. This is what the training's for. And my lovely fingernails don't help much. Come on, thing. Mine either. Okay. So we got that part good enough. Perfect. And then we're going to take the crossbar. Okay. In the middle. All right. And then we'll basically just lay it down. Now look, I left all the other PLA over where it got delivered, but I have PLA. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, that's perfectly fine. We can use yours. All right. It should work the exact same. Okay, perfect. And you'll probably find out that you like printing it at 220 degrees more so than whatever you were printing. Well, yes, believe me. Well, see that other Athenia came with ABS. Yeah. yeah. Really forever, and then I ordered PLA, and then whatever. I had issues. Never mind. Okay, go ahead. Go on. All right. So what we're going to do is, you'll notice that the spool first has it kind of pushed off here to the side. Now we want to make sure every time we put the spool back that we put it in one of those holes to make sure that it doesn't unspool. That's simply because if it does, you could get a tangle or something, and whenever it tangles in one of these areas or goes underneath one of these. Then you'll have the problem of it knotting up and won't feed. So just a precaution. So our printer's been heated up. So this is an excellent time to tell you that it's not going to hurt the printer to stay hot without filament in it. Oh, okay. If it has filament in it, that is a bad deal. That's because if it's hot and it's not printing, it has the plastic inside of it, it's going to bake it. It's basically going to make it a big black clog because it's sitting at 220 degrees Celsius for a while. So if left for 10 to 15 to 20 minutes, it's going to cause problems, okay? Okay. But since it's heated up and we don't have anything in it, it should be fine for as long as we really want it to sit there. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go ahead and feed this in. 
Time out. So you're saying don't just turn it on and let it sit there for an hour. Turn it on, heat it up, and then use it. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. So you don't want to leave it on forever. So these uh, printers do have small microcontrollers. So if you're just leaving them on 24-7 for multiple weeks, it could eventually burn out. That is a possibility. It's unlikely, but just something to kind of keep a precaution on. Okay. So you should be able to leave it on uh, throughout the entire day, just like whenever you leave, maybe hit the power block off or something. All right, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna turn this to the right and we're gonna look at that E motor that we saw earlier. This section right back here. Okay. Now this motor is going to allow us to basically just squeeze this trigger here where the spring is and push in through the hole next to the Z axis. I'm gonna do that. So squeeze the trigger, push it through the hole and all the way through the other side to the tube. Okay, and then push it all the way through the tube. If you have a weird end to your filament, sometimes this has a weird end when being pulled out. You can always just take it and snap it, and it should make it easier. So is it having trouble going through? Well, well I'm going to snap the end, like you said. Okay. So. Hold on, how is that? Am I? Oh, first, and then I'm going to. I'm sorry? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. My bad. I got it. Okay. Now I'm going to get it. Hold on. So sometimes it can be a little hard to push through, so I'm having some issues too. So what I can do is I can rotate it. I go all the way into that. All the way through the tube. Until it won't go anymore, or what? Well, until you kind of feel like it's, it has pressure. So once you feel like it goes all the way and then it won't really go anymore, push okay, it. I'm, there. I'm having trouble getting mine in. Oh Lord. So once you push it all the way through, you should be able to push it just a little bit more and then take a look at your nozzle and see if it squirted out the plastic that you wanted. Okay, hold on. Oh, yeah, 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 it's going. Good. Yeah, it's it. yeah. So it may be a different color their first time. That's because we test each printer before we send them out. So this is a good way to clear out old colors or make sure you have the color that you want inside of it just by manually pushing it through. Okay. That can also help with clogs and other things. So oh, gonna, wow, that's so cool. Okay. I'm going to push mine a little bit more, push all the plastic out until I get the color, because mine was maroon before in this, so I'm going to keep pushing until I get my silver that I fed in here. There we go. Almost there. So there's my kind of curly cues. Okay, hold on. Okay, I think mine's the color it's supposed to be. Perfect. All right, perfect. So all we have left to do is to print. Yay. Sweet, so go ahead and click on the button and go down to print from SD card and choose your robot. So when you hit that file type, it's going to say heating. So first it's going to heat up, then it'll move to its origin point, which is this here, and then it'll start printing. Okay, yeah, it says heating. And that's... Then it'll move. Yeah, down to the corner. Perfect. 
And what we're going to watch is the first layer. So we want to see how it lays down on this pl plate. Remember, okay. don't see it coming out at all. It's too close. If it looks stringy like pasta or spaghetti, then it needs to be closer. So okay, it like went down and hit the plate, and now it's going back up. Yep. It should be fine. That's its starting. Okay, so now it's moving to the center or whatever. Perfect. So it doesn't look like mine's sticking quite in the back, so I'm going to move it a little bit closer. Okay, it looks like mine's sticking, but... There will be no raft to peel off if I don't want it. There's none of that crap. Right. So do you see it sticking to the surface? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, it's doing pretty good. Perfect. Sounds like you did it great. Woohoo! Sounds like the paper works for you. <laughs> I always feel like it never works for me and I do it like three times and then I'm like, oh, you know, I know I did the paper and then like you said, I started looking at it and it looked too far. Yeah, so that's, exactly. That's the perfect way to do it is do the paper to get it close and then look at it to actually finish it. Awesome. Well, if yours is printing, then that's the end of the train. Okay, so one quick question. My kids, I have 20 computers in here in my room. Um, so each one of them will have to like put Cura on the computer, right? Correct. So it is user specific. So if John logs in at the computer and then Marcy comes along and logs in at the same computer, she's gonna have to redo the settings. Okay, so I need to be sure with my tech people that when it says to install, they're allowed to do it. Right, they should only have to install the program once and it'll be on the computer, but they will have to change the settings inside of it. Okay, okay. Yep, and so if you are kind of wanting to do a whole bunch of computers and you don't want them to change all of the settings so much, um, if you wanna instruct them how to do it, that's perfect. If you would rather load a single file and have it immediately, I can show you where that is too. Um, what do you mean load a single file? And so I'll share my screen and I'll show you. Okay. So if I open Kira, and then I kind of need my SD card, so I'm just going to unplug my printer. The fail safe on these printers is to unplug them. Okay. So if you ever need to do that, you are more than welcome to. If they're making funny noises or screaming at you like a dying transformer, just unplug it. Okay. So on the SD card, inside of your Cura folder, you should have this configuration settings, right? So it says printer profile. Okay. In order to use this, all you have to do is go to file and load profile. Okay. Nope, oh, that's not what I want. Open profile, apologies. And then we're going to go to the Cura folder and then just click on the printer profile. Okay. And what it's gonna do is it's basically going to create a whole new machine and load it in. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna change all of these settings here. So here, let me make a, go to this machine, which is a different type, it's bigger. If I hit file, open profile, and that folder, you'll notice that everything should shrink to it. Okay. Actually, sorry, those are all these values here on the left-hand side. It's not adjusting my machine, machine. You will have to do the machine settings. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. You will have to do the machine settings but it, it can set all of your printer profile settings on it. Okay. What other questions do you have? Uh, for the moment, that's it, but I'm sure I'll 
have plenty more. Yeah. And if you have any sort of question, if they're just based kind of like, you know, working with printer questions or anything like that, I'm more than happy to answer them from my email. And you can okay. have that from the invite. Okay. And I'll send you a follow up with this video as well. Or you can contact our support as well as your students. So we actually have a small troubleshooting forum on our website, just at nwa3d.com slash support. Okay. And you can request it there, and it's basically gonna ask you for a Google form. The Google form is going to ask, you know, what's happened with your printer, what type of printer, um, and then who are you in your email, and then who's your facilitator. And so that allows us to CC or copy you in the email that we send to your student, so we can have transparency and work back and forth. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so they can do all of the troubleshooting themselves. You don't have to be involved unless you just want to be. Okay, 